Well, it is good to be back, Foot Clan, this crazy, wild, wacky weekend, getting everybody hopefully into the championship. We're going to cover those players who helped you get to the championship, or we'll lament the ones that really got in your way, and we will uh, share in your pain, and there's a special matchup to pay attention to between two people from the show. Enjoy today's episode. Make sure you like, subscribe, and uh, let's get you some hashtag Foot Clan titles this year. While you sort out your 2022 budget, think about this. You can save 72% on restaurant quality meals with HelloFresh, and you don't even need to hit the grocery store. Get 16 free meals plus three free gifts with code FOOTBALLERS16 at HelloFresh.com slash FOOTBALLERS16. And do you ever feel like you're being followed around the internet? Maybe advertisers know a little bit too much about you. Well, IP Vanish, a virtual private network, is here to help take back your privacy, help you become anonymous on the internet. A VPN can work on your computers, your tablets, your phones, even things like your fire sticks. Protect your data on those free public Wi-Fi. It's important because what you're doing on the internet... It's your business, nobody else's, and right now they're offering an incredible 65% off their annual plan. They are the best of the best. So go to ipvanish.com slash footballers to claim your 65% savings. Their annual plan is just $44.99 for the first year with our exclusive discount. This is the time to sign up with our discount and their current promotion. You can get a VPN for 65% off. IP Vanish is the best of the best, even rated 4.7 out of 5 on Trustpilot, and that's with more than 6,000 reviews. Remember, it's ipvanish.com slash footballers to get the deal and start protecting yourself online. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. We're back. It's good to be back. Hey, welcome back, Jason. Oh, I'm happy to be here. Your family's good. Family is healthy. I am healthy. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm uh, putting on the pounds just to get healthy. You know, uh, uh, protect yourself. You protect yeah. myself. Bulk up. <laughs> uh, it's bulk season. I'm happy to be here. Uh, in honor of this <laughs> fantasy football season, I am on COVID quarantine. I am healthy. We are healthy here, but. You know how it goes. Christmas time, lots of family, lots of friends, and uh, look, I, I don't want to be in the same room as Jason. That's what it, that's what it comes down to. I don't want to risk being in the same room as Jason Moore. No, I get it. I mean, I get it. My wife says that all the time. So uh, not not the first time I've heard that. But I I think you really don't want to be in the room with Mike and I, who are destiny bound and yes. back. In the championship while you sit there on pins and needles against Al Borland and your matchup is going down to the wire. You could, one of you is no longer with us after tomorrow because you will melt into the ground and you will live in the sewers as, a, as <laughs> ooze. Well, I, I let me say this and I, you know, I'll tee it up for Al to, to chime in, but he, he made a good point on Twitter. And just to lay, give you a lay of the land, I need the Miami defense to score nine points tonight against Ian Book and the New Orleans Saints. If they do, I win, and I go to the championship game. If they don't, Al is victorious over me, and uh, he, he you know, is a happy person. But the truth is, he doesn't have a job regardless because <laughs> yes, he either yes. wins and is fired Yes. Or he loses and quits. So that is the two possible outcomes, and we are hiring an audio engineer. And so I'm putting the call out on Twitter. Are you doing okay, Al? No. <laughs> okay, that was – you You wouldn't even uh, like um, – like there, I, I'm feeling the personal vitriol from you and your co-manager because apparently I'm being called names in secret places. Like, um, you know – Look, if I win, I'm better than you. That's all I'm aiming. Mean. Oh, oh, now, now the talk has gone back to winning. Ladies and gentlemen, if you could have seen what was happening in our company Slack, I've never seen 
More cowardice <laughs> from two grown men back and forth congratulating the other person on their victory. How was, oh, how was dinner lose. last night, Andy? Yeah. So I, I, uh, I'm in the other room I'm last night. I'm in the other room last night, and uh, my wife or my, my son actually comes in and he goes, why do we have pizza? Why did pizza show up at eight at night or whatever it was? And there, lo and behold, Al Borland pulling out all the all the stops. He, four pizzas showed up at my house last night, which uh, if you go back in time about three or four years, Jason bought pizza for Brooks. It's a like pre-congratulations. And it worked. I won, <laughs> sucker. To, to jinx him. And suddenly pizza showed up, which obviously I know the rules of jinxing. I didn't eat any. Mm. I didn't eat any of the pizza. Ooh, wow. I want pictures of full pizzas in the trash. Yeah, just, I mean. Just to send it to them. I think I, I fed my kids. Don't worry. I mean, I think that that's okay. But I didn't touch the pizza myself, which nullifies the jinx. <laughs> I don't know. The okay. pizza well, was know. used. <laughs> Whereas Jason, <laughs> you knew I was going to eat the pizza. Well, yeah, you you love pizza. It was yeah. a, it was a trap you could not resist. And also, Brooks, <laughs> congratulations to you. You are in the Dynasty Championship. And Foot Clan, listen, About time. at home, Thank we you. hope that you are in uh, your championships. If not, I'm glad yep. you're still listening. We're, we'll get you there next year. This is uh, it's been a battle. It's been a battle, yeah, but I'm all of us are still playing for something uh, right now, going into the the championship week. And uh, speaking of jinxes, it is confirmed none of us can attend Cardinal games. So uh, <laughs> they did they did lose <laughs> with me there. I had the chance to uh, meet a couple of Foot Clan people at the game, so that was pretty awesome. And, uh, of course, this was a wild week in a fantasy football. As Jason said, we hope that you had some success. Uh, I know from Monday Punday that you all did not. Right. Uh, there were some strong reactions. So, of course, we, we put out the call for some Monday Punday entries, and it's time to get sophisticated. Mm. Mm, yes. I will begin. <laughs> Just win, Jackson. How about... Justin Jackpot touching and then uh, so impressive we Higgins with terrific Higgins oh what about Rex Berserkhead <laughs> <laughs> you've also got T-Rex Burkhead oh, and um yes Rob Gronkowski mm, some bad tight ends maybe George Little oh no and then of course every week is uh, Cooper Yup. Yep. Yep. And Saquon Barfley. <laughs> Tyreek Hell. Oh! <laughs> yeah. It's simple. It's simple. Uh, whoa, Burrow. Oh, plug your nose, because Matthew Staffart is <laughs> oh. <laughs> coming through. <laughs> Amon, yeah, St. Brown. Russell Rage. Oh, and Smelvin, <laughs> Smelvin Gordon. And my personal <laughs> favorite of the day. Ben Worthless Burger. <laughs> oh. Yes, you are. Watching, you know, watching Ben play yesterday. I know I, I know it's been a ride for the last couple of years, but I yesterday in particular, it felt like he was he had, their football was a medicine ball. Like <laughs> yes. it had been replaced with a weighted ball that weighed probably 15 pounds and it just it took everything in him to get that ball down the field it, very unsuccessfully. It has really changed for me watching him from over the last couple of years being disappointed, being angry, making jokes, to now it's full empathy. Right. <laughs> Des despite the Ben Worthless Burker uh, moniker here, um, I watch and I feel like I'm watching my older uncle just do his best. Just He's just – he's trying so hard and I feel so bad for him. Um I still I have I have a memory of when my grandfather shouldn't have been out playing basketball. Oh no. And he, yes. And he came out and played basketball on Christmas one day and he tripped and fell into a block fence. <laughs> and <laughs> brutal. <laughs> And, and, and that every, was the end of Grandpappy. And that, that was the end of playing sports for Grandpappy. But I remember oh, the way everybody no. felt. And it was, um, look, it's not far off from old Grandpappy out there. Right. He might as well have two cement blocks with his feet locked in them. It It is, um, you know, as a Cardinal fan watching our team collapse at the end of the year, it is kind of strange having the two biggest rivals, in my opinion, where like the Cardinal fans hold – 
the Pittsburgh Steelers in contempt for the Super Bowl mm -hmm. and then see their dynasty ending. And then the other arch rival is Russell Wilson and the Seattle Seahawks, who seem to, I mean, blowing that game yesterday was impressive. <laughs> it was unbelievable. So um, now the real question is, did Matt Nagy you know, like earn himself another year with that win? Oh, yeah. Ho hopefully not. And just to, to wrap it up for Ben Roethlisberger, like you saw all that happening, and yet still better than Mason Rudolph. I know. I think the same thing. Like He is clearly their best option. <laughs> We're making all the jokes, but Grandpappy in the cement block is the best chance at victory. Well, All right, let's uh, let's catch up on some news. We got studs and duds today too. News and notes from around the league, presented by Sleeper. As I was commiserating with one of our uh, listeners at the Cardinal game, we were both noting how, you know, you pull your hair out on a year like this where you head into the fantasy playoffs and obviously the COVID protocols and players, like there is an element of preparation in fantasy football and putting yourself in the best position to succeed. And then there's, there is an element of just, just luck this year where you, you're, you're waking up in the morning and you, you're glancing at your phone with maybe one eye open and you're hoping you don't see the, the name of your player show up on that news alert. And mm -hmm. so uh, this weekend, we didn't have Travis Kelsey, right? He didn't make it through protocols. We didn't have Mike Williams, who is now out week 17 as well due to COVID protocols. Gabe Davis was a surprise inactive against the Falcons. And so uh, Tyler Huntley didn't play. Ramondre Stevenson ended up on the, on the COVID list. Mm. And uh, I'm going to make a prediction that we have the same level of uh, antici uh, anticipation, fear, Next yep. week. Next week. Yeah, yeah, we definitely will. There will be more players added to the list. Uh, and week 16, though, it also reminded us, it's not just COVID. It's also the, the, the injuries right at the beginning or the middle of the game that oh. it takes players out. Uh, James Robinson, the budding superstar running back for the Jacksonville Jaguars, he went down in the game right at the beginning, and he suffered a torn Achilles. Now – we can pair that with some hopeful news because Cam Akers from the Los Angeles Rams, he was actually activated. He tore his Achilles in the preseason process. Unbelievable. Uh, yeah, the recovery process here has been wild, something we haven't really seen yet uh, in the modern NFL. He was designated to return and then was activated. He did not play this week, but it looks like they're going to be getting him ready, Cam Akers, ready for – the, the, the actual playoffs. Yeah, the playoffs. The The reason they activated him now is not because he's actually ready. The NFL, you need three weeks on the 53-man roster to toll a season and for, for your pension. And so they, they kind of came out and said, like, th this is actually really cool of them to have him on the 53-man roster for these final three weeks. I don't expect him ready before the playoffs. We've talked in the past about the brutal nature yes. of Achilles injuries for running backs. There's literally never been an example of one coming back until this year where Deonta Foreman, mm -hmm. and granted it took him several years and, and kind of being out of the league and coming back, uh, but he has proved that you can do it, and now Cam Akers, I, th I think we'll see him in the playoffs this year. But So James Robinson, he, he tore the Achilles. He's going to be – he'll be out for a while. Uh, yeah, This is going to be the Deonta Foreman pathway for him, unfortunately, because – of the later round draft pick, they have Travis Etienne. Um, the injury at the end of the year, like I, we're not going to see him at the beginning of next season. No, he doesn't have a contractual obligation that's going to force him back on the field. Right. I, I mean, do you guys agree with that? Like, this is going to be a really, this is almost a dynasty killer for him. It it is. It very well could be the end of James Robinson having fantasy relevance for ever. Uh, I, I that wouldn't shock me at all. Like you said, low draft capital, no draft no, capital. Yeah. Um, and uh, the fact that there is a first round, great talented running back there, he he's not going to be rushed back. He's not going to be needed back immediately. And then there's no incentive or you know that that uh, investment that requires you to rely on James Robinson. They, I mean, the team will have to prepare 
to be without him, and then as they make that preparation, he yeah, he's going to have a hard time coming back. Which, if you are in a keeper league, he he probably is rostered in a keeper league. You know, people are are more savvy to these move these moves these days. But if Travis Etienne happens to be just sitting there on the waiver wire, I mean his his status now as the projected lead back it's much more clear where if Robinson had made it through the season healthy we were going to have this debate all off season is it Robinson is ETN going to take the job it's now ETN's job to start the season yeah so, it's, it's him if it, he can. and on a personal level just devastating for James Robinson somebody yeah. who who beat all the odds being an undrafted star and you know if if Philip Lindsay had torn his Achilles in Denver you you never it was it you know mm -hmm. so uh, Miles Sanders also fractured his hand in this game, which was, you know, devastating for fantasy players yeah. and for the Eagles. And Jordan Howard sustained a stinger in the game. Um, there's a chance that Miles could play through the injury after undergoing more tests, but it seems unlikely. Seems Clyde sucks. Edwards Alaire was ruled out in the second half with a shoulder injury. The uh, I believe I saw the MRI was negative, though. The X ray was or the negative. X -ray, X -ray. And he's going to get an MRI. Okay. So TBD. On CEH. Nice. I was hoping you'd go there. Uh, Daryl Henderson, knee sprain. He played one play, basically, one touch. And it was a real nice run. It was. And, uh, you know, and got, like, talk about needing, needing Cam Akers if if Daryl's not available, which he's that's his permanent status pretty much. Uh, you're going to need somebody other than Sony who's been playing well. And then Adam Thielen spent most of the game running plays and then acting super hurt. And then came back in and then left super hurt again. So, you know, counting on him in week 16 is not going to be a thing. You can't do or it. If, if, if you were able to overcome uh, the Thielen injury and you're still, you know, playing, you cannot put him in your lineup the Agreed. rest of the season. That was today's news notes brought to you by Sleeper, of course, the leader in breaking news alerts. Even if you have to have only one eye open when you get the alert, it yeah. is still – Important to get the alert. So grab the Sleeper app and join their channel. This week's Fantasy Stud Muffins. All right. The good, right? This is the good. Uh, Mike, this may be the greatest start of the week in the history Thank of you. starts of Thank the week. You. And yeah. we, we needed some of that. Um, Joe Burrow. Uh, Joe Burrow is awesome. Like as a per as a personality, Joe Burrow right. is awesome, and as a quarterback, he proved that he um, he can play with a chip on his shoulder. I don't know if you saw the comments from the opposing coach from Wink, yeah, where they basically just said, "Hey, I'm not ready to give him a gold jacket just yet. Let's not talk about him being great. He's good." Uh, and then he went out and put up 525 passing yards, four touchdowns, almost five. Yeah, he had one called back, and yeah. it was – I mean, this was unbelievable. And when I saw this game, let me just give you my reaction. It was the Bengals should lead this division or be in competition for it for a long time. The T. Higgins, Jamar Chase, Oof. unstoppable combination. It's nasty. And Ty Tyler Boyd is the perfect wide receiver three. Right. For like Tyler Boyd's nothing special. But if you're talking about your third wide receiver, that's you build you build your third wide receiver to be Tyler Boyd. Yeah, yeah it's, it's just wild. It's so impressive and and I know we'll talk about the, the wide receivers later, but my goodness, when you can have the level of bravado I would say that's not even the right word confidence Joe Burrow plays confidently at quarterback which means he's willing to do the things that we we've always said people should do when when Larry Fitzgerald at the peak of his career hat was double covered you don't care you yeah, throw the open. ball you throw he's open double covered yeah and D Des Bryant was like that you know obviously Randy Moss was like that and and not to you know <laughs> conflate Randy Moss and T Higgins but there are players that you just need to throw the ball to them and not be afraid, and Joe Burrow's made of that kind of mental fortitude. So, yeah, I mean, um, what a game. Yeah, they look fantastic. Hayden Winks did tweet out. He said Joe Burrow becomes the third quarterback ever to have 525-plus passing yards and four passing touchdowns. So that is the level of, of uh, history. If you played Joe Burrow, 
Congratulations. If you played against him, I'm very sorry. Yeah, and and, uh, Field Yates tweeted out, the Bengals are now the first team in NFL history to have a 4,000-yard passer, a 1,000-yard rusher, and 2,000-yard receivers all age 25 or younger. (laughs) So when Andy's talking about they should really be competing here for a while. That's hot. Congratulations, Cincinnati. Dak was back. (laughs) He heard the slanderous. The slanderous things people were saying, uh, maybe they may have been said on this show. I will not. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Well, look, uh, we did. When, when it came down to it on the show, Mike, when it was this player or Dak, yeah. it was always Dak. So, and it was because of this. It was like, it wasn't so much that you had confidence that it would happen, but that it could happen. And Dak can do something that, you know, uh, a middling quarterback in a nice streaming matchup can't do. Yeah, he, it was 330 yards, four passing touchdowns, and what's, it's actually it was unfortunate. Like it was unfortunate that that's all he got to do because mm-hmm. if you didn't watch the game last night, I believe it was uh, 42 to seven at halftime. It was 40 something, and like the game was already done because Washington uh, just fully face planted. They let the game. Uh, get out of their hands immediately but I mean it's hard to complain with 330 and four yeah. but it's just like all right yeah it could have been more the could've only way more. you can complain is if you were playing against Joe Burrow <laughs> right like, that's not fair <laughs> uh but those two guys hopefully you had them and then you moved on in your in your fantasy playoffs and for a second consecutive year Josh Allen had no problems with New England in New England mm-hmm. uh and and they they got the victory he went 30 for 47 he used Isaiah McKenzie to disintegrate yes, their defense. Yes, he did. It was craziness, McKenzie. And then um, – And he's got Atlanta now. Atlanta and the Jets. If, if you play into the unfortunate Week 18 and you have Josh Allen, I mean, you're you're good to go. Aaron Rodgers was awesome again. You know, yes. three, tu- three touchdowns, only 200 yards. This is efficient. Rodgers has Minnesota next week. Congrats to those that have Rodgers. And Kyler Mahomes- Murray – yeah, but Mahomes was was really good. It was, it was nice to see him. You know, you worry without Travis Kelsey, is he going to get it done? And and mm-hmm. the, their their ancillary wide receivers really stepped up, broke a lot of yeah, tackles, Mr. made Pringle. plays for him. Mr. Pringle got he, into he it. He popped and, and like. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, it's Kyler. I mean, that really? that fruit was on the ground, Jason. Yeah, Kyler really is really on this list. No. I guess that. I mean, he had two forty five and one through the air, and he had seventy four yards rushing. So. You, I was surprised he was on the list because we are the harshest critics, but statistically he was, he was all right. Wow. Well, I guess quarterback rushing is uh, in fact, very powerful. Uh, yeah. He's sitting at the quarterback six with, uh, with one game left. So though we're going to get into the stud running backs, which will be highlighted by Mr. Justin Jackson, of course. But before we do that, I want to thank today's sponsor Indochino fellas. Do you need a new suit? The answer is, yeah, you probably do. Uh, We've been living a strange life where we haven't really needed to dress up. You haven't needed that suit. But Indochino is here to let you know we can do that. We can get you a custom suit fit for your body and for a price that you will not believe. I love my Indochino suits. uh, As Jim Carrey would say, fits like a glove. Like a glove. Thank you, Jason. Uh, I went down to the showroom. Just snip, snap. Just went, went, got measured. It was incredibly fast. I felt incredibly comfortable. I got to make all these really cool selections, really cool customizations. And before you know it, this suit just shows up at your house. Indochino offers completely custom-fitted suits, shirts, casual wear, and more at a surprisingly affordable price. Every piece is made to your exact measurements, and you can customize every detail. Like I said, your your fabric, fabrics, lapels, monogram statement linings they've got you covered and right now you can give yourself a custom closet revamp with indochino or give the gift of great style with an indochino gift card but you can get 50 dollars off any purchase of 3.99 or more by using the promo code footballers at indochino.com that's 50 dollars off a purchase of 3.99 or more at i-n-d-o-c-h-i-n-o.com promo code footballers 
And if you've ever wanted to make your home a little bit safer, feel more comfortable at home, there is no better time than right now with our friends at Simply Safe. Great friends of the show. They've been with us forever, and we are great friends of their product. We were users of Simply Safe long before uh, they were ever a sponsor here. And right now, their New Year's holiday deal, 20% off their award winning home security system, and your first month is free when you sign up for the interactive monitoring service. We love Simply Safe because they are the way home security should be done. Whether you want uh, indoor cameras, outdoor cameras, comprehensive sensors, they are they have everything. It is very easy to set up. That's why they were even named the best home security system of 2021 by U.S. News and World Report. There's no long-term contracts, no commitments. It really is the best easy way to start feeling peace in the new year. You can hurry and take 20% off your Simply Safe system and get your first month free when you sign up for the interactive monitoring service. Visit simplysafe.com slash footballers. Again, that is simplysafe.com slash footballers for 20% off your entire system. All right. When we talk about fantasy running backs, you know, there's a saying in fantasy, and the saying is that if Justin Jackson, Rex Burkett, and Sonny Michelle don't lead the way, you don't want to play. That's right. And uh, luckily, they led the way because, look, Justin Jackson, this was a this was a opportunity situation. You play Houston, no Austin Eckler, no Mike Williams, and so you become the running back, and guess what? You become the wide receiver as well because he scored twice on the ground, went eight for 98 through the air, and um, this is this is one of the best spot starts we can remember. Yeah, it was a giant sigh of relief because by by the time Sunday morning rolled around and I'm doing Sunday Live, like I knew Justin Jackson would be the question of the day, and we got to the end, like halfway point, and I'm telling Brooks, I'm like, I'm starting to feel very uncomfortable <laughs> because every answer was Justin Jackson, and it was I said I'm like. Okay, here we are. I've pushed all the chips into the middle of the table because the answer to almost nearly every question I'm getting is Justin Jackson. <sighs> Thank God when, he came through. When I uh, I got to give my ten year old credit, who's on his way to a title game. Um, in the middle of the week, when I told him Austin Eckler was declared out, or you know, towards the weekend, I expected it's, it's his favorite player. Austin Eckler's his favorite player, and I expected you know tears practically. And he just looked at me and he goes, hmm, well, I got Justin Jackson. <laughs> and I mean, he was right. I mean, goodness. Man, uh, fantasy playoffs, when you have the backup <laughs> running backs, you win championships with these guys oftentimes. We, every single year we do it. I mean, our, our, our league, Mike, that we are going to the championship in, we've mm -hmm. lost Derrick Henry and Dobbins and Kareem Hunt and – now James Robinson and every running back, but it's Sony Michelle and Rashad Penny. It's these guys who just they're coming up out of nowhere. Um, and nobody was out of nowhere more than Rex Burkhead this week, who was our DFS dart throw of the week in the DFS pass if you're playing along there. But Rex Burkhead went nuclear, 150 and two on the ground against the Chargers, um, who can't play defense for, no, for what it's worth. No, um, I don't know if you're chasing this one I'm I don't feel like I'm chasing Burkhead as much against San Francisco next week not nearly as much no what about no, this this go ahead what about Andy's champion Andy's superstar against Al Borland Damian Harris oh, uh, brother. oh man <laughs> have yourself a game yeah 18 for 103 touchdowns for Mr. Damian Harris he gets to play Jacksonville all I mean Harris is v excellent. Like he is an excellent running back. The my biggest takeaway here though is, it, and we've seen the numbers. Buffalo had been falling apart, but like, what happened? What happened to the Buffalo rushing defense? They they did enough to to win the game. I get it, but like over the last month and a half, it just they have gotten destroyed by fantasy running backs, and I don't think that was a a letdown that I would have ever seen coming, uh, given that the way the beginning of the year started. Yeah, it's, it's been crazy. 
Yeah, it's similar to the Steelers. I mean, if you remember through the first half of the season, the Steelers yes. were a team you did not play against. You did not want to. And then you look at the trends. If you go to our uh, stream finder on the fantasyfootballers.com, you can see like the trends and very easily look how different parts of the season uh, are are going. But to me, the, the what's happened since week 10 for the Buffalo Bills, when you look at that and you go almost every week they're giving up a monster performance, you can trust it. You can say, okay, something has happened here where they're, they're not stopping the run anymore. When you look at, you know, Chase Edmonds had a huge game, very Justin Jackson-esque, had a mm -hmm. touchdown, had nine targets, eight for 71. You know, when I look at these studs, David Montgomery, a big game, Sonny Michelle, Rashad Penny, you're really asking the question is, can I roll this back, right? Can I, mm -hmm. can I, can I do this again next week with a player like Burkhead, Damian Harris, Chase Edmonds, you know, Sonny Michelle has Baltimore next week. He seems locked. Yes. And then Rashad Penny, you know, against Detroit next week could end up being like he, Sonny Michelle and Rashad Penny were first round duds that may win championships for a ton of people. Yes. Rashad Penny. I mean, I was, I was very guilty this week with him against Chicago with the way it looked last week where he just getting banged up again is I don't know if I can really trust Rashad Penny as more than anything like a, I guess he's a desperate low end running back too, but monster week and now coming up against Detroit, Penny looks like uh, oh, he, yeah. he he will be a uh, just that that waiver stud that jumps in your lineup and helps you win a championship. All right, with wide receiver studs, we have to talk about those Bengals. Uh, T. Higgins, Jamar Chase, twenty three targets between them. Higgins went twelve for one ninety four and two. <laughs> And Jamar Chase went seven for one twenty five and one. What a loser! <laughs> Only one hundred and twenty five yards. It's funny because you start to look at these two, and you you know Jamar Chase is going to get drafted higher than T Higgins next year, mm -hmm. no question. But on any given week, with the talent, skills, and ability of these players, it reminds me of like you know Larry Fitzgerald was always drafted ahead of Anquan Bolden, but they're both talented enough to dominate a game. And so, you know, it's going to be hard next year not being on the Higgins side of things when you have two players that are extraordinary, but one is drafted lower. Well, and it's great to see now as the season has progressed, Joe Burrow has gotten fully past, you know, whatever uh, injury and, and same, same with T. Higgins who struggled with uh, some injuries in the beginning of the year. It's awesome to see the Bengals figuring out how to use both of these players so that you can confidently start both of them I know a couple Thursdays ago on our never not working segment we deep dove on what the reality is of that wide receiver core in the beginning of the year it was all Jamal Chase and T Higgins was mm -hmm. um, gone and, th and that's just not the case anymore I think going forward for years you're going to have two great options um, and really as great as T Higgins has been and and really his whole career I mean I remember leaving last year thinking the two players I wanted to make sure I had was T Higgins and, and CeeDee Lamb and then coming in this year obviously that changed with Jamar Chase added to the team but um, y you're talking about a, you're not going to game plan T Higgins when Jamar Chase is there Jamar right. Chase is the one that you're afraid of the the real taking it over the top breaking plays destroying your game and T Higgins is just the beneficiary forever Devontae Adams, 13 targets, 10 for 114 and two. Mm -hmm. Al got to use him to demoralize me. Uh, A.J. Brown, 16 targets, 11 for 145 and one. That was, It was fantastic. Because Do you know he was... had a 55% target share? <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Hold on. Yeah, hit that button. 55! Because it was like lost in the – a little bit in the shuffle of the – you know, the – the holiday weekend, uh, it, his activation came down to the wire. I I was on Twitter because they had it was up to like three p.m. our local time when they could actually activate him, and it was two fifty something, and there was still nothing. And it was oh well, if it's this down to the wire, are they really gonna put him in? And then if and then when you just are so late to activate him, will he really go in there and be the guy? And of course, the you know the the time rolls through. AJ Brown is officially activated, and so if you had 
the fantasy courage to plug him in, congratulations, because he <laughs> he dominated uh, not just the targets, but 11 for 145 and 1. It was a fantastic game for Mr. Brown. He had 73% of the wide receiver target share. <laughs> So, like, when he's dropping back, he's going, where's A.J. Brown? Yeah. And it's it's great to see going forward uh, Miami and Houston to finish the year out. You have to include Amon Ross St. Brown in the yes. the, the rookie uh, stud category this year where, you know, he's ending the year on fire. Um, Al played him in our matchup. Oh, wait, no, he didn't, did he? No, he did not, but to his oh, – I thought he did. To, yeah, that's, that's a good troll there. Uh, to the credit there for Owl, as soon as – when it was not Jared Goff and it was Tim Boyle, mm -hmm. like, there I bailed. There was no way I would have played I'm, him. I no. am guilty. I bailed out. It's like, I don't know how you play St. Brown with that dude as the quarterback, even though it's the Atlanta Falcons. And then another game of 11 targets. That's That's a complete month, four straight games. Of eleven or more targets for for Saint. Do you Brown. want to know what his pace, his season long <laughs> yeah. pace is over the last month? This sure. rookie Amon Ross Saint Brown playing for a bad offense with mediocre to bad quarterback play, he would be on pace for 195 targets, 148 receptions, 1445 yards, and 12 touchdowns. He has been dominating for the last month, so he is a player you need to pay attention to going into the draft season next year. How much of this? should be attributed to Dan Campbell taking over play calling because he I, took the play calling away. And I guess Deandre Swift's injury has got to be yes, significant. And Hawkinson. Yeah. And Hawkinson. Yeah, that that's true. But it is nice to see that like they're making it a priority to get him the ball, no matter who's the quarterback. Yeah. I, I, I definitely think that the targets are caused because of Hawkinson and Swift being gone but what we're paying attention to and loving is that the talent, this isn't too big for him. The rookie has come in, and while the targets are being forced his direction, he's he's dominating with yes. them. So going forward, I mean, this is really promising for the Lions' offense next year. If they got healthy and could do something about the offensive line um, with Swift and Hawkinson and Amon Ross St. Brown and whoever they add, they need to add some a hope. They need to add a big-bodied wide receiver in the draft. That's what they need. They need somebody T. Higgins size to complement how you know Amon Ross St. Brown is undersized, and so um, that would be helpful, I think, for for their offense. Diggs and Cooper, two of the stalwarts of your fantasy teams, both put up seven for eighty-five and one, so that was nice in your fantasy semifinals. And then Debo, of course, went back to the uh, success through the air category, nine for one fifty-nine. Uh, incredible. I, I doubt many people played Isaiah McKenzie or Byron Pringle, but they both had nice weeks, and you might have pivoted into them out McKenzie of desperation. Will be, McKenzie will be interesting next week. Um, so was that Gabe Davis is – He is out he next will be week out? against Atlanta. He will be out. He is unvaccinated. And then so I would imagine that Beasley's out then as well. Um, yeah. But, I mean, the matchup against the Atlanta Falcons, if McKenzie's a full-time player – he there were be interesting. There were a couple of players that people pivoted to that was the that ended up the wrong players, which was like Isaiah McKenzie was better than Emmanuel Sanders. Some might have right. pivoted into Emmanuel Sanders, and then uh, uh, Tyler Johnson and oh yeah, who got completely goosed for for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. <laughs> so <laughs> you know Antonio Brown. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so Devontae Smith ended up 5 for 80 in a touchdown. Cooper Cup, 10 for 109. And that feels like a down game for him. What a bad game. <laughs> yeah. I know he set the NFL record for most consecutive 100-yard uh, receiving games, but no touchdown, which is uh, both disappointing and a little embarrassing at this point. Yeah. So um, tight ends, Mark Andrews is unstoppable no matter who the quarterback is. He's done it with Lamar. He's done it with Huntley. Now he did it with Josh Johnson. I'm up next. I want to play quarterback. I know where to throw the ball. I'm going to go. the giant Mark Andrews, um, who will, now that Kelsey lost this week, he's going to finish as the number one tight end on the season. Um, and I feel better about uh, our dynasty trade, Andy. Yeah, you smoked me. Dalton Schultz, eight for 82 and one. Ooh. So another nice game for the doctor. He, is, he was uh, yelling. G Gerald Everett, four for 68. And Kyle Pitts was six uh, for 102, and of course, no touchdowns. He doesn't do that. Um, 
He has 949 receiving yards in the year, which is now the second most in NFL history. He is 127 behind Dicka with two games to go. So if he sets that record, that will be with an extra game. But nevertheless, what uh, what's crazy about Pitts' season is that I think I think Jason and I will be simultaneously correct about him. Where Jason's point at the beginning of the year was that well, he's a rookie tight end, so he's not going to do enough for the draft capital. And he's right. He scored one time on the year. The one touchdown has disintegrated him. And my point before the season was that he'll probably have the best rookie season ever, which is going to be right on a number of metrics, but it won't be enough to have, you know, if he had two more touchdowns, he'd be the, he'd be the tight end four on the year. But um, still did enough this week, six for 102, to keep pace with a lot of the other uh, tight ends out there. Yeah, I mean, the, the talent going forward, obviously in his rookie year for what you had to pay up for, I think most people regret the draft pick and would have used that capital elsewhere. But as a rookie, to really show out and dominate yardage-wise, uh, receiving-wise, I mean, the future is so bright. And you go into next year and you're going to be talking about, okay, is it Kelsey's and Mark Andrews? And then you're going to be like, now, where is Pitts? Because right. you've got you've to realize he will – upgrade he will level up uh, and if this is the baseline you're coming from he's going to be in that conversation with with Kittle and Pitts and yeah, he, he's gonna he's gonna be a thousand yard tight end and he did all of this like he's the dude like it's Russell Gage out there mm -hmm. as the only other offensive weapon like I think that point should not be uh swept under the rug here like this is it. What he has done is incredible uh, for for the 949 yards at this point, and I'm it's very excited. Very excited for Kyle Pitts next year. It's literally just touchdowns for Kyle Pitts. Yes. If he had scored more touchdowns, he's a game changer. Um, it's nice that he gave you a tight end four week for your semifinals, and of course Jimmy Graham gave me another touchdown. <laughs> Hey, I was happy. I was happy <laughs> this time because we we lost uh, Travis Kelsey uh, in our semifinal matchup, and we pivoted to Jimmy Grandpa. So in a dynasty, happy, yeah, in a, in our dynasty league, not not many people available on the waiver wire, and uh, very very happy to pay you another hundred dollars. But if you want to bet going <laughs> forward, Andy, I ain't no coward. <laughs> Wait, you want to wait, take this bet, gonna, Disley versus a, Graham? A fourth time? Doing? Let's go! Jason, you're going to Oh, be my broke. God. <laughs> I'm calling well, your wife. <laughs> Don't tell her. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. This is... Uh, I enjoy getting $100 every week in my, in my text. All right. Well, not everything was great last week. Pooped in his big boy pants. Well, this is the hard part because I'm not sure how helpful this is to just, I mean, we have to live in it again. It, it's a, this is a mourning process of just dealing with the grief and calling it by name. And this, it's helpful for the healing process. Matthew Stafford. Stafford. You know, when you, when you line up uh, the matchup and the player, and you look at Rodgers facing this Minnesota team next week. Yep. You know, Stafford, it didn't work out. You now, know, he had three picks. Yeah, he, he had three picks. Two of the three was egregious, and I would not say even on Minnesota. Like, I, I don't think they did something special. Stafford played awful. And even after the game, he taught, he's like, you know, our running game was awesome. And, I, you know, we won in spite of me. Uh, I did my best to, to, like, ruin this game, and he did. But uh, people have bad games sometimes. Uh, three interceptions wasn't good. They got the victory. The running game's good. I I, I completely you discount that. Like, I, I don't worry at all about this versus, like, Tom Brady had a bad game um, but was missing a lot of weapons. Right. And so – but. Maybe if Mike Evans and Chris Godwin aren't back, do you worry? I mean, he's got yeah. the Jets, though. Well, yeah, he's, because he's, it, a, he's a scary one. I worry a little bit because, uh, like, the recipe for this game, he he got a, he ended up with a touchdown, but the recipe almost came true, what we said on the show last week, which was 
you know, you, you may just end up with that situation where your defense makes a play. Ronald Jones runs in a touchdown and then the need, you know, to stretch the field or really, you know, he didn't need to use Gronk. And so there is a risk. Yeah. And against the jets, you could see the exact same game plan of just a defensive score and Rojo runs. Oh time. man. Ronald Jones next week is going to be sensational. You mean yes. Keyshawn Vaughn? <laughs> I, I I get that he had the big play. And, oh man, that Keyshawn Vaughn run. If you have not seen it yet, the it was a nice run. The touchdown highlight run where he, I mean, like broke three tackles, stiff armed a guy into the ground, was great. But Ronald Jones is going to be <sighs> fire this week in championship. What's the opposite of that? Because that's what Melvin Gordon did. Uh, the, the opposite of that fire is, in fact, finishing a game with negative rushing yards. Negative That's... rushing yards. Can we get Al's thoughts on this performance? <laughs> Al, what did you think of Melvin Gordon this week? I was displeased. <laughs> okay, seven for negative four in... And, of course, Javante had only seven carries. They held these two running backs. I mean, Javante dominated Melvin Gordon, and he was seven for 12. Right. So and they combined for what like three for twelve through the air. So there, this was a full Denver stink fest. And I don't know if this had to do with Drew Locke. I mean, it might have had a lot to do with hey, guess what? Here's the game plan: stop the two running backs, watch Drew Locke play quarterback. It had to be. Yeah, that's that's what I think it was. Uh, I the, you know the Raiders to me aren't just the the most fearsome lockdown. Uh, defense in all of the land but when you can focus on I mean you for for fantasy I mean think about it on the opposite uh, you know the opposite perspective is you can start Gordon you could start Javante and you don't touch any of the great receivers there you're you're no fan Jerry Judy Cortland Sutton Tim Patrick, you're not even looking their direction. So, Sutton had the most yards he's had since week eight. I'm saying before the game. Go, <laughs> Which go, was 33 receiving yeah. yards, oh, by the way. Oh, come on. What happened, man? <laughs> Going into the game, it's it's certainly this is a team that can only run the ball and can't throw the ball. So stop the run and you win the game, and they stopped the run. And won the Day, game. What do you do? Like, Did you hear this news that Joe Judge and, and Daniel Jones are coming back next year? No, they are What? I, I mean, one of the producers, go ahead and vet the tweet, but it, the word that I got was that both are coming back for another go round. I, it, the, the Daniel Jones thing doesn't surprise me of like at this point in the process, maybe a quarterback shows up that they can uh, upgrade from Daniel Jones. But it's, from it's Adam very, Schefter. It's very difficult to upgrade your quarterback position, but to keep going forward with Joe Judge, that would be, that's surprising to me well, at this point. He got a lot of really nice gifts for the cooking staff. Um, so <laughs> it, a lot of publicity over his Christmas gifts this weekend. And I think he bought himself another year with uh, his. That was generous. I will say generous. that. Oh, it w absolutely was. And they took that budget out of the reward for the season ticket holders, where all the season ticket holders got a medium soda oh. as, a, as a free token. Was that token. the Giants? That was the Giants. So then oh, they man. they came back into the PR world and they gave three hundred thousand dollars to of bonuses to all the cafeteria <laughs> staff. Thank you for your uh, thousands of dollars for your tickets. Here's your <clears throat> soda that costs us approximately. 15 it feels like cents. a joke. It a feels medium, like a joke. Not a large. You don't get a large <laughs> soda, but because you got season tickets, you get a free meat one over the course of the season. You get one free it's medium. It's not even like a souvenir. Wait, it's cup? not a free medium every time. I, I think they just get a free medium drink. Uh, maybe it's every game. I don't. <laughs> Even uh, if it's every game, that's still a slap in the face. Yeah. Because every time you go up there, you're like, man, I'd really like a large. But no, <laughs> I'm a giant season ticket holder. They make you. You can upgrade, but it's a it's a surcharge. Yeah. 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 Wow. $5. Um, speaking of the Giants, Saquon did nothing in championship uh, or semifinal week. Dude, what what do you do? With Saquon Barkley moving forward. Well, the this season you can't do anything because Daniel Jones is How gone. How many seasons do we go? It's low end RB one next year. Okay. Yeah, I, I think I think that's fair. Maybe even just put him into firmly into RB two territory. He'll be fantasy relevant, but with this version of the Giants, um, I mean, I believe Kadarius Tony was the leading receiver, um, which 
you could say, well, that makes sense because uh, Kadarius Tony had, I think, nine targets. Kadarius Tony, nine targets, four for 28. 28. 28 yards. Um, and I believe he was their leading receiver. I mean, when you've got Jake from then getting benched, Mike Glennon coming in, you just, this they don't have an offense. Right. Not but, th- but I'm saying, like, almost every time I've been watching the Giants lately and I see uh, – a nice run. I'm like, oh, there's Bark. That was Devontae Booker. That's fair. And so they're both running behind the same offensive line. I understand that things change when the backup comes in and like your your defense isn't schemed necessarily to, like, to stop a, a handoff here. But Devontae Booker throughout the season has looked like he has juice. There's burst. You're excited when he has the ball. Over the course Barkley, of the season, it hasn't been that the whole time. Devontae Booker is averaging four and a half yards per carry. Uh, we're talking the whole season, so plenty, right. plenty of volume. To and he's know. been the starter several times. And Barkley is averaging three and a half. So right. I mean, you're 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 not wrong. The the juice seems to be with Booker over Barkley, which is insane. All right, well, th- let's get to the player that single-handedly costs the most people their semifinal matchups, and it's got to be Tyreek Hill because you yeah. spent the entire week. Look, it would have been, frankly, better if he didn't play because you would have pivoted to another option, like an Amon Ross St. Brown. Like That has to be out there. A ton of Tyreek Hill over Amon Ross St. Brown. A ton of Tyreek Hill over some of the, you know, the Josh Palmer who ended up with a, you know, a double-digit game or Devontae Smith or, you know, Tyreek goes two for 19 against Pittsburgh. So this is another case, Mike, where we talked about it last week. There have been a lot of bad performances on the back of COVID lists. Right. So it's not not necessarily that the players are like, you know, I mean, it can be that they're limited due to physical situations. Mm-hmm. But but I think some of it is just like you don't practice, you don't plan for this player the entire week, and suddenly they're back. And he, he only played 42% of the snaps. Um, so there you is, go. Now, is that because – you blinked and they were up like twenty nine nothing, um, and it's, so the game is just completely. Uh, this game was over so early. It was like I, I feel like I feel bad for the the fans at the stadium. It's like oh, we came to see a football game. We right. we got we got like eight minutes of football, and then um, so I, I'm not sure if that's the reason um, for the bad game or like you said the COVID and the low snaps because uh, you know still recovering. If you got through, though, uh, I, you know I expect a great week next week against Cincinnati. I, I don't think that should he's be gonna... a fun game. Oh, come on, Burrow, do it again. Keenan Allen was horribly disappointing. Yes, you he know was. no no Mike Williams and the, the whole offense. I mean, uh, aside from Justin Jackson, I mean there was some uh, very questionable Monday Punday entries, but one of them was like the Los <laughs> Angeles. Uh, discharges. I don't <laughs> look. It's not. <laughs> it's not okay. It's not okay. Four not our 30, words. Those not, are not our, our words. words. No, that's our listeners. <laughs> um, four for thirty-five for Keenan Allen, and wow. you know you would have been better off playing Josh Palmer. You would have been better off pivoting elsewhere. And Tyler Lockett here to remind us that he's still willing to uh, three for thirty your team. Yeah, I mean. Honestly, so he had he ended up with the uh, the three for thirty off the COVID list as well, right? But and DK Metcalf, he had he started the game with a bang, you know he had the what the forty something yard, yeah, forty one yard touchdown, and that that was it. That, that's what Metcalf finished with. So you better uh, count your blessings that you actually got that. Now it was it was a snowy game. Uh, up there in in uh, was that Seattle? In Seattle. Seattle. It's somehow it, it, snowing in Seattle. Yeah, but like Russell Wilson, man, is just disintegrating this year in front of our eyes. I mean, you you look at the last forever. Uh, this week, fifty nine percent for one hundred and eighty one yards. Uh, really, really for weird. For Wilson? Yes, it's really weird to watch how bad this offense is. And and now, you know, for a while, it was like, well, without Chris Carson, they can't run the ball. Rashad Penny looks great. Yes. Like, he should be opening things up, and Russ just isn't getting it done. It, it's, it's crazy because Russ has, in my mind, this year reverted to the pre-breakout Josh Allen because the throws that he misses are sometimes – like, he had a third and, third and four. 
DK yeah, Metcalf. Yeah. Yes. No one around him on the left side of the field. Airmails him. Like, this is not right. Like, there's got to be something still recovering with the finger. Could like, be. you don't you don't go from, at least I don't think you go from that level of elite to, you know, I don't know if he's pressing. There, there's a lot. He's never lost. I mean, he's never really been on a team that has struggled. So, going into next year, that'll be a whole nother question mark. Is Pete Carroll still around? Is Russ Wilson still around? If they are, what do you expect from the passing game? And um, Russ played well at the beginning of the year. So this wasn't a right. It's been entire season. It's it's since the finger injury. So I don't. Maybe you there's have to a, attribute that. Yeah, maybe there's a massive fantasy discount for people willing to take the jump next year. Yeah, in a dynasty league, uh, you know, I've brought this up before, but he's 33 years old, so he has not aged out here at for for quarterback. Right. And um, I feel like a lot of fantasy managers might think they've they're done with Russ. So kick the tires in this off season. The 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 wide receivers that I'm the other duds here all have questions for next year in my mind. Like C D Lamb ended up with kind of a down game. Um it was an Amari Cooper game. He he ended the year wide receiver or he's gonna end or right now he's wide receiver twelve. And then Terry McLaurin three for forty. That one is a Yeah. I mean, just a lost season and you know, DJ Moore, I'll bring him up. I look, you know that the quarterback situation hasn't been good, but you're now four years in with DJ Moore, and he ended with four touchdowns for the third consecutive year if he doesn't score in the last two weeks. So I just I think that there's going to be a level of fatigue in the fantasy football community for players like Terry McLaurin, for players like DJ Moore, and you know, you're gonna to have to shoot your shot on those guys and whether or not you believe moving forward. Because in our minds, McLaurin had wide receiver one potential. And I still think he has that talent, but then how do you have confidence drafting him there? Sure. And the same can be – same thing for DJ Moore. He has wide receiver one talent. He is no still sitting as a top 20 wide receiver. The The hopeful takeaway here for DJ Moore, which you can't say the same for the target share of Terry McLaurin, they, they need to force feed him more. But we're now back to four straight games where, where DJ Moore is seeing 10 or more targets. It's just – they're not great targets. And like, so you saw both Cam Newton and Darnold in this matchup here. And it it's a fascinating difference between seeing Cam throw the ball and then seeing Darnold. It's like Cam makes Darnold's throwing motion and just the, the way he throws the ball look completely effortless. Uh, but anyways, that, that's just watching. That's an aside. But the volume is, is there that – if somehow they found a quarterback, I think DJ Moore would is still in the area where he's he can become a top tier elite wide receiver. But the quarterback position is in uh, a disaster. It's a disaster currently I, for Carolina. Yeah, I, th I think the lesson to learn from this last year is they're going to bring in a quarterback. They 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 will now if it's. Aaron Rodgers we can get on board but when they came in this year and it was uh it was Sam Darnold or for the Washington football team it was Ryan Fitzpatrick they're going to bring in someone and there's going to be a hope and there's going to be uh, some level of excitement that's leaking out from each you know local media um, about the positive vibes going into the the season and the reality is there aren't that many great quarterbacks and when if these teams don't bring in a known commodity who is actually great, we have to treat them as a, a bad quarterback situation because that's really what it'll end up being. That is really well said. It's crazy. Since week four, his catch percentage is 52%. So you you, you know you know that that's not DJ Moore's talent. You know that right. that's a reflection on the quarterback. <clears throat> but you've seen his catch percentage go down, you know, year after year, which mm -hmm. is just – you know, the confidence level in Matt Rule and coming back, and there's a lot of question marks there. Uh, nothing for Van Jefferson. One for six. A yeah, couple dud games in a row. Russell Gage did nothing. Four for 39. Julio's career is over. Chase Claypool ends with a, I mean, another quarterback situation, inconsistency. It's a bummer. Mm -hmm. George Kittle, Rob Gronkowski, Dallas Goddard. Oh, man. Light the candles. Have your moment of Devastating. sadness with these three. Devastating. 
yeah, Kittle is Kittle's been awesome, but it is it's interesting at, at least that this was okay. They got Debo back at basically playing wide receiver, right. eleven targets, uh, you know, a, a ton of air yards, and and all of a sudden George Kittle has a has a down game, three targets, uh, two for twenty one. So, I mean, you're not gonna bench George Kittle no, under any circumstance, not. but there is that worry I think of just like oh no I like put put Debo back at running back this team legitimately I'll never forget the the Kyle Shanahan quote like you he legitimately builds like 80 percent of the game plan around a single player for a game and we've seen this carry itself out in these games where Kittle just goes nuclear and it seems like oh he decided this week that he's going to focus on this so um next week is Houston you know Gronk has the Jets and Dallas has Washington or Dallas Goddard has Washington so all three have like on paper bounce back matchup potential. So I imagine if you made it through, they're your starting tight ends. Yeah. Also, uh, Kyle, put Trey Lance in, you coward. Do it. Do it. I think they should maybe do that, but I'm not I don't sure. think that I don't think they're mathematically eliminated yet. So. No, they're not. I mean, they went into that game with Jimmy G where the broadcasters literally just spent the whole time talking about how he's playing the best football of his career and they're he, on fire. He was playing well, but and he, then, he did not. And then it, he did not play well. So uh, we want to thank pristineauction.com for supporting today's show. David Montgomery, there's a signed jersey up there right now, $21. Devontae Adams signed jerseys up there for 55 Oh, <laughs> You can do it. <laughs> pristineauction.com. Use the code BALLERS. You'll get a $10 credit. We'll be back with waivers and um, – Again, hiring for an audio engineering position. Uh, Al will be out after tonight. Um, it's been a good one run way for or another. Yeah. yeah, it's been fun having you around, man. I, I, you know, this matchup not as fun, not as fun. Uh, but tonight it's going to end, and we can all follow along. Go on Twitter. I mean, I think you you found the silver lining here. Win or lose, you gained like six hundred followers this this oh. week. Yeah. That's right, and I'm taking them with me to my next job. <laughs> <laughs> They're mine. <clears throat> At Producer Borland, and uh, follow along with us. Nine points. We'll keep you posted on what's going on and the status of uh, Al Borland's health. It, it's so interesting because in your matchup, Al already has the points. He has the victory. Yeah. He has the lead. But because of how you know it, it comes, you just need a pick six. You need a defensive touchdown. And all the way up to the very end of the game, if it hasn't happened yet, Al can't be happy. Al can't <laughs> think he's going to win even when there's like two minutes left in the game. There's there's only the chance early that you win and you know, Andy. You're the only one that can be happy watching the game. If something happens early, right. you can be happy. Al cannot be happy until that <laughs> clock strikes zero. <laughs> I'm so excited and interested, and I'm happy that us and the Foot Clan – Get to watch your matchup. This is what we. This should have been the 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 championship week. I'm so sad that you can't both be vying for the title. But this is fantasy football. And uh, let me throw this in there too. If the way platforms work, the defense will start with points. So the second the game begins, yeah. he will be down to me, and that is a psychological advantage that I'm really looking forward to. Um, every special teams play, every sack, but. Al, as we close the show, you've got you've got Ian Book in your corner. <laughs> got to do your cooking by the book, man. Hit uh. the button, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get out of here. That's going to do it for today's show. I love you, show. Al. Foot Clan, thank you for joining us. We will be hitting the waiver wire tomorrow. We will be securing that fantasy football championship, that hashtag Foot Clan title. We'll see you then, everybody. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.